All right. We got stragglers trickling in here. That's heat me. Heat and AC test 13. Heat and AC test 13. Um, technician A says faulty heater operation can be caused by faulty engine cooling system. Technician B says a complaint of insufficient heat can be caused by someone not filling the cooling system properly. Yeah. Now you know when you bleed out that Tahoe out there, Dustin, that you need to turn the heater on wide open. And you need to make sure that you got good hot heat coming out of there. Um, when me and the girl that used to ride with me to high school, uh, she was just a friend of mine that was in a community, I go and pick her up. And my LTD had a uh, leaking water pump. <laughs> And uh, what's funny about that? And then, story. <laughs> yeah, and I stopped and I would stop and, and when we didn't have heat, I'd stop and I'd pop the radiator cap off. Did she, was she over there? Was she over there? Six class days left? But, uh, but anyway, and I'd pop the radiator cap off and it would just spray water over and I'd fill it up with water and then we'd have good heat. But, I mean, I, I could always tell when we started losing our heat that we were getting low on coolant. Hey, That's how I know I'm not low on coolant to view it. Mm -hmm. What? You may call back, but I got forwarded. You got forward, dude. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have voicemail. But the uh, the Buick's got that low coolant sensor. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what? It's not low. Turn the heater on. So the heater works just fine for me. Well, it's basically that Buick is looking at the concentration of the coolant. I hope it's, not. It's got too much or too little. It's a $50 sensor. Uh, technician A says the heater core leak can be the result of the coolant wearing a hole through the core. Yeah. You got that? Oh, by the way, it was uh, C was the other one. And... Uh, uh, which would be both of the guys were right. Technician B says a core leak can be caused by chemical action eating a hole through the core. That's so that was good too. That's true. He's calling you back, Joe. Technician A says the heater uh, core inlet hose is connected to the water pump inlet. Not always. Well, now wait a minute. So you got inlet connected to inlet. What does that mean? Is it going both directions at once? Yeah. Exactly. When you say not always, what's up with that? Technician B says the heater core inlet hose is often bigger than the outlet hose. Hang on. Inlet's bigger than the outlet. No, that's wrong. They're reversed. That's backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Neither one of those guys are right. They're both buffoons. Both yo uh, <laughs> Insufficient heat output from a heater can be caused by A, plugged core, B, airlock, C, faulty thermostat, or D, any of these. Any of these. Everybody like that? Any of these. Technician A says faulty cable adjustments can cause improper heat and AC operation. That's if you've got cable operated doors, right? Mm -hmm. Technician B says a broken vacuum hose can do the same thing. I'd say they're both right. Charlie is right. Both of them. Uh, vacuum motor should do what? It Should it move when vacuum is applied to the port? Should it hold vacuum? Should it both A and B or should it neither A and B? I think both A and B. Yeah. This is a vacuum motor here. I'm always holding this up in front of the class it's a vacuum motor part of an AC system yeah. and all that and, you know this one here is actually a two position vacuum motor so why would I have a two position vacuum motor anyway Open and close. for maybe heat and defrost you know when it's one to go at the same time or maybe you know something like that by level on your old GM's um, let me see typical intake manifold vacuum readings at idle or how much 82 please I'm making it up as you go what is it? 10 to 12 or is it 18 to 20? It's not 10 to 12. So 18 to 20 is healthy. Okay. Vacuum diagrams generally contain all of the following except vacuum control door positions, vacuum control components, hose colors, or, or vacuum temperature readings. Hose colors? Oh, hey, you haven't looked under the dash, man? You know you got all different color hoses under there. One oh, of them, yeah. yeah, you do. So it doesn't have vacuum. What's the difference? What the heck is vacuum temperature? Vacuum temperature? It non-existent. Uh -huh. That way you're not going to have that on a vacuum schematic. How would you put that on a vacuum schematic anyway? Uh, plus or minus 40 degrees. Centigrade. Of course, yeah. A vacuum check valve is used to do what? Um, Virtually always. What is it supposed to do? Yeah, when you're d deep into the throttle, if it goes into defrost, suspect a vacuum issue. Now, the vacuum problem can be one of the motors under the dash having a hole in the diaphragm, or it can be the vacuum reservoir leaking, or it can be that little vacuum check valve 
leaking. And some vacuum check valves are built into the uh, doggone reservoir. The one on uh, Adam Knapper's car is built into the control head. Wow. Which is very, like yours too. Yours would be that way too. Uh -huh. Oh, that white car you're driving. Not, not, oh, it was your yeah. your, your uh, fiance's car. Um, let's see. Uh, Technician A says a thermostat that opens too soon can cause poor heater operation. Technician B says low coolant level can cause poor heater operation. So you are, we're obviously talking about heaters this week, right? Both of those yobos are... Both of those guys right there. Four so, nine. And I will tell you that... Uh, huh? What was nine? Yeah, nine was, nine was eight. Are we on? Uh, we're on. Did you talk to him? Yeah, I talked to him. Yeah, what did he say? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Gave me the address. I'm going to punch it in on my GPS and call. Mm-hmm. All right then. So, did you tell him you were leaving work, and so you're going to have a Guns and Roses T-shirt on and a baseball cap I, with a fish hook on it? I got Troy that I left some clothes at his house because I was planning on doing some. Oh, you're one there. of those guys that has somebody in every city that's going to change your clothes or hold it for you, that's huh? It. Smart. Pretty okay. much. Yeah. I have one in Montgomery, one in Troy. He'd be like James Durban. Bond if he was in Pakistan. He'd say, "Yeah, I know a nice restaurant in Karachi," you know. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which test are we on now? Well, uh, we're, on, we're on the same test that we were on. We're just farther along. Uh, let me okay, see. Let's uh, pull one out of the box. Under what, under what conditions should vacuum readings... We're on uh, Heat and AC test 13. Under what conditions should vacuum readings be taken to assess supply vacuum for the actuators? With the engine running. What do you think? I don't think it's going to be a wide open throttle. Engine running, not wide open throttle. Wide open Pressure throttle. <laughs> Yeah, pressure relief grills. What the heck is that? Okay. That's most of the, the yeah, the engine running. Testing most vacuum operated controls requires what diagnostic to diagnostic tool? Blah, blah. A vacuum gauge. Both A and B. A vacuum gauge and a handheld vacuum pump. You know what the coolest thing about a handheld vacuum pump is? That? It really sucks, man. Okay. <laughs> After the, <laughs> after the water pump was replaced and the coolant system was refilled with coolant, the heater stopped providing warm air. Which of these is the most likely cause? Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to go with C. An air pocket is trapped in the heater core. That's why you need to make sure you got your heater on high and you're checking to make sure the heater is good and warm. Had this one guy, I told him, he used to sit in that chair right there where Joe is right now. Uh, and I told him he had a vehicle just like the one that Dustin is doing right now. And he, was, he got a radiator for it, and he put it in there. And I, I've been, the whole semester I've been preaching, putting cooling system, filling the cooling system. It's not like pouring water in a bucket. you got to burp it out. you got to make sure the thermostat's open. you got to make sure there's no air in the block. And he was just in a big hurry because it was his vehicle. And so he drove out of here, and he wound up over there somewhere later that weekend at the uh, IGA or somewhere, and it started overheating. So he took the radiator cap off in a big hurry to see if it had water in it and it sprayed a bunch of hot coolant out and gave him some secondary burns. And I kept telling him, you know, run the thing until you know the thermostat's open. Don't feel like it's full just because it's up in the top of the neck. I need the way that works. You're going to have to run it until the thermostat opens up. You're going to take 30 minutes to, to, to make sure that thing's right if you do it the right way. You know, if you get in too big of a hurry, you you, you mess up every time. But, I mean, you can leave that cap off and see the, the thermostat open as far as the water level. You can watch it circulating and all that. But that's why we put the little red cap on there that doesn't seal against the bottom of the radiator neck. So we and, we let it, you know, and we let it burp out the air into the degas bottle. And we let it drink out of the degas bottle until it has everything it wants. And that way it doesn't puke all over the floor. And then you just put the, uh, the regular cap back yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. That's a tool, man. That's, I mean, I've done that for eons. And you know when I started doing that? When I was at the Ford dealership, I was playing around, you know, and doing stuff that might sound stupid. But I noticed that whenever I put my hand on top of that thing, and I go boom, 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 I'd feel it pushing, pulling coolant out of the thing. And then when I let go, it would push, it, push air back into the coolant. I said, well, if I had something that could do this all the time, wait a minute, a radiator cap would be perfect if you get rid of that bottom part. Nobody else that I've ever seen does that. Some of the guys would buy this elaborate funnel off the truck, off the tool truck, this big funnel that clicks on there. But the only thing about it is sometimes when you're done, you've got this much coolant in your dead gum funnel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But anyway, if you just let the degas bottle help you if you've got one with a radiator cap. Now, if you've got one that's just got the big heavy-duty pressurized surge tank and that's where you put the coolant in, that's a kind of a different story. You know, they don't, they don't, their properties are slightly different on that. Some of these vehicles that have a real sharp nose in the front, that the radiator is lower than the engine, you literally have to jack the front of the car up so the radiator will be higher than the engine so the air will get out. 
you know, that's crazy. You don't usually see that a lot, but some of them. And I don't remember which cars it was, so don't hold me to that. Okay, let me see. Um, a lack of heat from a heater's being diagnosed. Which oh, is the most likely? Car. Huh? I have a car that does that. What? Or I had one either. Yeah, I was kind of like it. I have no earthly idea of what this is. Well, that's, Not me. Hold on just a second. That's my my buddy. Hey, David. Pretty good. Are you in the, are you in the wind? Okay. Well, you know you know where Doc's is. I'll see you when you get there. All right. I forgot that ring. All right. Now then, here we go. Uh, after the water pump was replaced, and wait a minute. Excuse me. A lack of heat from the heaters being diagnosed. What's the most likely cause? What do you think? Anybody like that? I like it. What about a partially clogged heater core? How many of you guys in here like have encountered that. a clogged heater core? Some of you have encountered one in here. I know Melissa's probably ran into two or three or four of them for some strange reason. And so what do we do to She's determine? Do you remember what we do to determine? Don't we reverse uh, flush it? Yeah, we do, sort of, but what do we want to do to start with? I want to get me a clear hose, and I want to pull the heater core out, and I want to put a clear hose in between. I want to replace the heater core with a piece of clear hose that I can see in. You can buy this stuff at Ace Hardware and all these places like that. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to crank the car, and I'm going to see what happens. That tells you a couple of things. To begin with, if, you don't, if, you don't, if one side's not bigger than the other, you're going to see which way the coolant's traveling. Secondly, you're going to see if it is traveling. Now, we had one that we had, it was a Taurus, that uh, they says, uh, we, my, I got no heat. Well, I figured maybe it's going to be a blend door actuator or something, but there was not anything traveling through there because when we pulled them hoses off, we put a clear hose in between there, we cranked it, and there was almost nothing going through there. So we pulled the water pump off, and the impeller had been rusted away to where there was almost nothing left of it. So we put a water pump on it, and then it would go screaming through there, but they had a bunch of rust and stuff in all of them pipes, and we had a you know, blast all that rust out of there. And then we wound up putting, uh, she didn't even need a heater core, but we fixed all that. But you got to make sure it's flowing through there good. Now, occasionally you'll see a water pump, like on, on some of these doggone, uh, like one of them over there, that the impeller gets loose on it. Yeah, David? Yeah, it's on the bypass. Whenever you get to the uh, bypass, the op bypass, just turn right and you'll see it on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Whenever you're coming straight out, when, are you coming 84 or are you coming 134? Uh, 84, when you get to 84, you're going to hit 84 and you're going to turn left. And Docs will be on the left. Left. Go. When you get to that big four-lane bypass, it looks like an interstate almost. You turn left and you'll see it on the left. Yeah, when you get to the op bypass, that's right. All right. If he, if he calls me again, I'm going to swipe him off the other side of the screen. What? Are you supposed to flush your uh, coolant system every day, or two times a year, or every year? I would flush the coolant system about every 30K. That's it, just every 30K? Mm -hmm. If you keep it flushed, too many people ignore their coolant system. They think as long as everything's okay, everything's okay. Uh, I have seen vehicles that whenever you try to flush the coolant system, you wind up, they got like, I had an uh, Eagle Medallion that came in there one time that was running 240 degrees. It was running really, really, really hot. And so they, they gave it to me for running hot. Well, the coolant was a kind of an ugly color that you could tell it had been in there since the car was new and it sort of turned brown. And so I, I did, all I did was drain all the coolant out. I mean, I didn't even have a coolant flush machine in my service bay. Drained all the coolant out, you know, into the pan. And then I poured the uh, fresh coolant and water back in it and the temperature went down to like 212 or, you know, 220 or something like that. So the long and the short of it is, sometimes you can have bad coolant making it run hot. It's always a good idea to flush the coolant system whenever you see that. However, my vehicles, both of my 07 Fords, my Taurus and my pickup truck, use the gold coolant that yours was using, right? Because you had an 07 Mustang. I flushed that thing at 30K on my car because it was what it called for in the maintenance book. And the, what was coming out looked just as good as what I was putting in. That didn't mean it didn't need to be changed. My pickup truck called for it at 100K. And I flushed it, and it looked just as good coming out as it did going in. And I spent some coins on that. But see, now I have fresh coolant, and on my pickup truck, I can't remember who did it on my truck. I used distilled water. On, maybe on both of them or one of the other, I can't remember. You're supposed to use distilled water. <laughs> but I bought distilled water to use for that. I don't know if it's $8.75, $0.80 cents a bottle. 
You know what I mean? So you don't have all those minerals trying to chalk up everything in there. And you see when you pull a cooling system apart, all these minerals and crud that are chalked yeah. on the inside. Yeah. You don't have that if you use distilled water and flush your coolant regularly. That's just real important. Um, heater hoses are attached to the core using what? I'm going to say it's actually... 14 either. would have been... 14 was supposed to be B, by the way, partially clogged heater core. 15... I'm going to say it's either A or B. Yeah, it is either A or B. Um, and the, the problem that I've had here, you know, you know both A and B, uh, but you don't have an either A or B for a choice. You just get the best answer. Um, remember, you had the Chinese heater cores and the Chinese replacement quick connect fittings on these Fords. You know, the thing won't go on there all the way, and I hate those darn things. So what did we do on the Expedition? I mean, on the F-150, we just took those things off, shoved those things up over the little rib on the heater core, tighten the clamp on them. That way you know they're not, you know, they're on there good. Uh, the complaints, poor heater operation, the top radiator hose and both heater hoses are 160 degrees. Technician A says this problem is caused by a plugged heater core. Technician B says the thermostat must be stuck open. Um, Who's correct about that? I don't want to say both. What do you think? Poor heater operation, the top rated air hose and both heater hoses are 160, so that means it's not a clogged heater core because you're obviously getting cool flow through it. Both heater hoses are 160, so you are getting, yeah, you're getting it through there. It's flow, so it's got to be the thermostat. Yeah, I would probably now see the answer key claims that's wrong, but I would say the thermostat's going to be my first choice on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are we supposed to put on it? Mm -hmm. Just D? Well, if you want to get it uh, right and not cross up, get D. put D there because this is neither technician, but I don't like that answer. Technician A says a plugged heater core can be cleaned by filling it with ammonia. What? Have you ever smelled ammonia? Okay. No, I'm not doing that. Technician B says the best way to repair uh, is to replace the heater core if it's plugged. D. Who's right about that? D. Uh, B, well, yeah, but I mean, we flushed them. We flushed heater cores and wound up, you know, with no problem. So usually you can, you know, you know, you can flush it. But basically 17, there won't be for an answer. Techni AC performance test shows good high and low side readings, uh, pressures, but the air discharge at the ducts is not as cold as it could be. This could be caused by what? Missuggested actuator motor, leaky vacuum hose, Blend nor not closing completely. Incidentally, on that 2006 Chevy pickup the other day, that we were hearing this tick, 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 tick business under the dash, weren't you involved with that? We uh, we actually got the, the, the you had a left and right blend door actuators, right? So if this tick, 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 it would stop if you move just the left temperature control. So we replaced the left hand temperature control actuator. But we need to know, the HVAC controller needs to know where the stops are on that motor. Pay attention, you guys. Watch. So what we did on that was we pulled the, the HVAC ETAC fuse, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, what you're supposed to, put it back in after we replace that actuator, crank it up, wait 40 seconds, and it sweeps everything through on that Chevrolet, and then it knows where everything's at. So it basically calibrates all the actuators after you reboot the, the you know, your color that reboot in that controller. Reboot the controller, crank it up, it wakes up and says, oh, I need to know where, I forgot where all of my actuators are. And it says, I'm going to sweep all of them back and forth and see where the potentiometer tells me they are. All right. Um, let me see, let's see. Oh, we got that one. We only got two questions. Uh, a plugged cabin air filter can cause engine overheating. The plenum inlet air filter is usually located under the hood inside the engine air filter box. The what? The plenum inlet air filter. That's basically, you know, another word as far as I'm concerned. Well. Air filter? Yeah. So, I mean, seriously? Plenum inlet air filter? I mean, this is plenum. So we're talking about air conditioner. They're basically talking about cabin air filter. But I say, yeah. let me hit you with this. And you know, I mean, mention this. Now, you're going to sooner or later, if you're going to be able to draw an, a Nissan Altima that needs a cabin air filter in it, and you're going to be really confused looking for it, but it's right in the middle, right, you know, halfway between on the, in the center of the bulkhead, and there's a little bitty cover that you take out. The cabin air filter that you get from the parts house is just right to stick through that little hole, but the one that you get from the dealership is twice as big as the dadgum hole. So you got to squish it together like an accordion and stick it in there, and it's going to pop out and fill up the space. When you pull the other one out, it kind of crumples up and comes out, and then it springs out and be real big. And you took one out the other day that was loaded with acorns and all kinds of junk, you know, where some squirrel had been living in there. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, that Cabin one. Cabin air filter. 
Huh? Yeah. Yep. So is 20 true or false on that? Both of them are false on that. Okay. One time, I, I think I told you about that, my dad was living in his head at a little sawmill out there. He was operating. He'd live in that trailer during the week because it was close. It was a long way from where Mama's house was. And he put some Eagles number seven rat poison out for the rats that were fooling around the trailer. And he got up one morning and they had put a bunch of that rat poison in his boots. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's, I mean, I'm not kidding. That's, a, that's the truth. They, they loaded his boot. But there was not a rat in there, but there was a bunch of rat poison in there. And it was almost like they were saying, yeah, we know what you're doing. Here's, here's what you can do. Here's what you can do with your rat poison, buddy. <laughs> you know? All right.